It all started in 2019 on August 24th when Andrew Luck retired. Colts were expected to be one of the best teams in the NFL for years to come. You know, after making the new hire of Chris Ballard and Frank Reich, everything was looking up. Chris Ballard and Frank Reich got him an offensive line. They gave him a run game. They got him a defense that gave him even more opportunity to just bury the other team. And Andrew Luck would take it and, and just end the other team. He was great at that. Great at just making game-winning drives. Great at being clutch. Great at being consistent every week. Now, he did have those games where he struggled, but everyone does. And the Colts were expected to be a juggernaut in the AFC once again. It was until Andrew Luck did retire. So, since the Colts, since he retired, the Colts had not been able to find their guy. They tried Jacoby Brissett. They gave Phil Rivers his last run. And the latest, Carson Wentz. Now, Carson Wentz has some similarities to Carson to Andrew Luck. Physically, yes. Mentally, not even close. Andrew Luck was an amazing leader. Andrew Luck was... Ha, ha, you know, he had some fire. Carson Wentz doesn't really have that fire. He doesn't have that confidence. He doesn't express that confidence to the team. He doesn't bring the energy to the team like Andrew Luck did. When Andrew Luck finally got an offensive line, he got a running back. He got a defense. Look what he was able to do. Almost 40 touchdowns his first year back from having, you know, maybe a career-threatening shoulder injury. From You know, he didn't play for a, for a whole year. His noodle... You know, you know his arm was as strong as a wet noodle for freaking half the season. He was rusty half the season. He still found a way to throw 39 touchdowns. And the weapons weren't even great. Just goes to show you, when you have a guy like Andrew Luck, when you have a guy that can finish our games, that can stay consistent, that you know you're going to have next year, that, that you, that's going to give you sustainability, you don't need to have everything else just right the guy like Carson Wentz with the guy like Phil Rivers with the guy like Jacoby Brissett you have to have everything just right and if it's not you're not making a deep playoff run who says you're making the playoffs in the first place the Colts didn't even make the playoffs yeah they could run the damn ball yeah they could pass sometimes but you need consistency yeah they can take the belt you know the ball and defense but who cares and Carson Wentz just gives it you know, right back to them half the time. Yeah, he only threw seven interceptions to 27 touchdowns. That's a pretty damn good touchdown-interception ratio. But when you look at the fumbles, you go back, you watch some tape, you see that Carson Wentz threw a lot that he shouldn't have. Now, now Andrew Luck did this too, but Andrew Luck bounced back. And he had game-winning drives, and he was clutch when he needed to be. Carson Wentz is not. Philip Rivers was kind of. He, you know, he he was in the slope of his career. He was in the downward slope. He was in, he was on the decline, and he has been. It, you know, it. <laughs> when you can't put a game away, when you give the ball away to Tom Brady a few times, when you give the ball back to the Buccaneers with Tom Brady, with all these weapons, with the defense, you know. When you keep doing that, when you unravel, Tom Brady is going to take advantage of that. Good offenses, great teams are going to take advantage of that. Why do you think the Colts struggled to be playoff teams? Because they couldn't put the game away when it, when they were up. You know, no pass rush doesn't help. When you can't put the game away, when you're up two scores and you stay up two scores or one score for half the game, you give the other team that thought that they can do it, that they can still come back, that they got this. They need to take one play at a time. That's what they do anyways. But you have to be able to put a team away. And when you don't have a franchise guy, when you don't have a top seven, eight guy, you have to have everything else right. And if you don't, you're not you're not winning a Super Bowl. If you're not getting to the Super Bowl. It's very difficult to get to the conference championship if you don't have that top seven, eight guy and you don't have everything right. It's tough. It, it's a tough league. You know, so that's why we're stuck in neutral. And plus, we, we're we spending a lot on our offensive line. I get it, you know, but maybe we're going a little overboard with the offensive line. I get it. The offensive line is important. We've seen it with Andrew Luck. And you're going to be like, how dare you? But 
go look at the Super Bowl. Go look at the Rams. Their offense line isn't amazing. It's okay. It's okay at best. But Matthew Stafford is clutch. Even though he is mistake prone in the fourth quarter, in the biggest moments, he is one of the best quarterbacks in the league, if not the best. One of the best. And he had weapons. He had a defense that could take the ball away. There was a pass rush. There's a dominant pass rush on the Rams. Dominant weapons. A dominant quarterback. Offensive line, okay. Linebackers were, aren't amazing for the Rams, but they're decent. Safeties are pretty good. Corners are pretty damn good for the Rams. It goes to show that it's not all the trenches. You know, it's a day and age where you kind of kind of got to build the weapons a little bit. You know, you kind of got to get a quarterback who can put the games away. You got to help them as well. You know, but if you have the top seven eight guy, you don't need to have everything right. And Chris Ballard has struggled to hit home in the most important positions. Now it is difficult to get a franchise guy when you're not top five, ten, heck, even fifteen picks. And now on top of that, we don't have a first round pick, and we and we need a left tackle. We need, uh, you know, we need edge rush. We need weapons. We need a quarterback. Yeah, those are. Arguably the four most important positions in football, and the Colts don't have that. So, you guys let me know what you think. Why is this team stuck in neutral? It sucks. For since Andrew Luck retired, you know, the Colts have not been able to re- to, re- to to recover. Kind of, kind of like the Broncos. You know, Peyton Manning retired on them. Can't find their guy. They keep having new guys almost every year. And then that's kind of the Colts right now. Kind of the Colts. We look at the Broncos, and that's kind of us. So, it sucks. But, this franchise is going to be stuck in neutral for a long time as long as we keep doing this. You know, until we truly get our guy, until we, you know, draft the guy and, you know, maybe give him a chance to learn behind the QB. We're not going nowhere. Or unless we make a big trade for Russ or, or Aaron. But if you do that, you're not going to be able to build, you're not going to be able to build elsewhere. Now, if you trade once and get some draft and, and you get some cap... That's huge. You're going to have a little more stuff to work with, a little more, you know, draft assets to work with to maybe trade for another guy. But it's not much. Who's going to give up a first-round pick for once? No one. I'm sorry. No one's giving up a first-round pick for once. No one's probably going to give up a second. Maybe a third. A second? Probably not. Probably not. So, yeah. You guys let me know what you think. What do you think is going to go on? You know, why is this franchise stuck in neutral? You guys let me know. That's going to be it for this video. Hope you all have enjoyed this video. Hope you all enjoyed your weekend and you know, and you enjoy your day. Make sure you like, subscribe, and put the post notification bell on so you don't miss any future videos. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.